While researching photographs of Canadian Universal Carriers and their markings, I found this picture from the Imperial War Museum. The picture did not denote the unit it was from, but it did give me enough information to start me down a bit of a rabbit hole. In addition to having all of its markings super clear in the photo, the information accompanying the photo gave us a date and a rough location. July 19th, 1944, at the factory area of Caen after the fighting. This picture intrigued me a lot as the capture of Caen had involved mostly Canadian units and the arm of service marking on the carrier of 69 made me quite certain that it belonged to either the South Saskatchewan Regiment of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Division or the North Nova Scotia Highlanders of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division. The lack of an apparent division symbol also made me hopeful as Canadian division symbols are easily lost in photographs due to their solid colours and square shapes that lead to them being easily obscured. I needed to pinpoint the location of this photograph and I remembered a picture I had seen previously of a German patrol near a factory at Caen that had looked extremely similar. I dug it up and sure enough it appeared to be the same factory. I looked up what factories were around Caen and where they were and this was the steelworks at Colombelle. I was able to find aerial pictures from two different dates in the summer of 1944. One of them was from the day before our picture in question and the other was several weeks earlier in June. This is where I had a bit of a problem. The two pictures purportedly of the same factory did not match each other. No matter how hard I tried, I could not get them to overlay. As one is obscured by smoke but shows more of the area surrounding the factory, I needed to be able to compare both of them to try and figure out the position of the carrier photograph in relation to the buildings around the steelworks. After comparing some features that seemed similar, I finally came to the realization that the picture from the July 18th aerial tax was mirrored. Once I flipped it around, everything was a match. With that straightened out, literally, it was time to figure out where the buildings in the background were located. I found this simple diagram of the steelworks and both the universal carrier picture and the German patrol picture are depicting the coke furnaces and the blast furnaces at the south end. The German patrol picture is taken from the east and the carrier picture is taken from the west. It's hard to tell but it appears that there's an embankment here putting the location of the carrier here. With the date and an exact location determined, it was now time to figure out the unit and the circumstances surrounding the demise of this universal carrier. The day before the picture, July 18, 1944, Canadian and British forces had launched Operation Goodwood. Its objectives were to seize the remainder of Caen and the Burgabu Ridge to the south. Operation Atlantic was the offensive of the 2nd Canadian Corps as part of Operation Goodwood to cross the Orne River and secure the Caen suburbs of Colombelle and Vaucelle. The 2nd Canadian Division was to advance from the west side of Caen around the south and secure the ridges on the right flank. The 3rd Canadian Division was tasked with crossing the river at Caen and to the northeast of Caen and securing Colombelle and Vaucelle. The 3rd Division's 8th Brigade, consisting of the Queen's Own Rifles, Le Regiment de la Chaudière, and the North Shore Regiment were to advance first, securing Columbelle, the steelworks, and the ground around it. Brigadier Douglas Cunningham's 9th Brigade, consisting of the Highland Light Infantry, the Stormont Dundas and Glengarry Highlanders, and the North Nova Scotia Highlanders, would then leapfrog them to their objective of securing Vaucelle. The route to be taken by the 9th Brigade would mean they would pass the steelworks at Columbelle between it and the River Orne, a distance of only 200 metres. This places the path of the North Nova Scotia Highlanders exactly where this knocked out carrier is pictured. North Nova Scotia Highlanders commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Charlie Petch, detailed their operations that day in the regimental war diary. Weather, warm and clear. At 0600 hours we received word that H hour had been advanced 15 minutes. This appeared to be an indication that things were going well. We were in hopes that we had at last hit an easy task of cleaning up the enemy from Faubourg de Vassel. Map reference 065681. At about 0700 hours, the Air Force appeared in great numbers, and it was the greatest bombing display we have witnessed yet. At 0800 hours, the Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry Highlanders began to cross the canal and the River Orne over the Bailey Bridge, which is now known as London Bridge. The unit was completely across the river by 0900 hours, and we regrouped behind the 8th Brigade, who we were to follow on the high road above the river. The other two units of the brigade went according to plan along the river row. Our advance depended on the success of the 8th Brigade. 
and we found ourselves held up at the starting line for a long time. The Regiment de la Chantier of the 8th Brigade was being permanently held down by machine gun fire in the factory area just east of the river. The plan was then changed. The 8th Brigade was to clean up the factory area whom we were to push through and capture our objective of Vaucelle. The Highland Light Infantry were to follow up our advance and capture the ground south of our objective. We were held up at the factory area for two hours while bulldozers worked on bomb craters so that we could proceed with vehicles to our objective. In the meantime, the infantry pressed on and found heavy sniping and spasmodic mortaring to be the only opposition on that sector. About 1830 hours, Lieutenant G.L. Gamel, second in command of the carrier platoon, lost his life when his carrier hit a mine. When we advanced past the factory area, Lieutenant G. McDonald and Lieutenant Campbell of B Company were wounded by machine gun fire. There were five other ranks casualties, and by 2230 hours, our objective was secure. There was much uneasiness among all ranks as darkness approached from the number of snipers left behind in the city. A minor bombing raid by the Jerry's marked the close of our day. Our unit was the only one of the 9th Brigade who reached its objective that day. This diary entry is able to give us the exact details of the loss of this carrier. The picture fits the circumstances and location exactly, the only damage to it appearing to be the left hand running gear and track impacting the lower frame of the fighting compartment as well, damage that would be synonymous with hitting a mine. This is without a doubt the universal carrier of Lieutenant Glenn Gamble in which he paid the ultimate sacrifice. As the war diary is unclear when it comes to the casualties of other ranks, we do not know whether he was the only casualty of this mine. Although the war diary only lists three officers and five other ranks killed or wounded that day, a search of the Canadian archives showed nine North Novas were killed in action on July 18, 1944. In addition to Lieutenant Glenn Gamel, Sergeant Carl Rector, Privates Peter Bennett, William Groundwater, Arthur Wilkinson, Paul Hogan, Wesley Nesbitt, Roy Conger, and Leo Briand were all killed in action that day. I hope you enjoyed accompanying me as I dug into the history surrounding the picture of this carrier. As I come across interesting vehicle pictures like this one with rich full history surrounding them, I hope to do more of these videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching.